Hi guys, this is one more video for beginners in laser engraving. Do you want to learn how to easily make personalized keychains with your laser engraver? If yes, then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, for this project, you don't need to have a lot of knowledge about laser engraving. A beginner in the hobby will be able to do it without any problems. You just need a laser engraver, which doesn't need to be a very expensive machine. For what we will do today, a 5 watt laser will do just fine. For this video, we will use our Scopefun S9 equipped with a 5.5 watt laser head. This laser engraver has a working area of 410 by 420 millimeters. If your laser engraver has a smaller working area, it will work as well. We will also need a piece of thin wood. A 3mm thick balsa board will do just fine. Since the project is small, you can use wood leftovers from previous projects. As for the software, we will use Lightburn. If you don't have this software, you can use the trial version which is free to try for a few days. Ok, let's start by opening Lightburn. Lightburn starts with a defined working area. And it is there that we will draw our personalized keychain. At the left, we click on the letter A icon and on the working area, we will write the name we want. At the top, we have several options that we can choose, such as the font, size, spacing of the letters, alignment, etc. Once these details have been defined, we can then create the base of our keychain. To do this, we click on Offset Shape here at the left. Here we choose Outward and as the corner style, we will choose Round because it suits this font better. In Offset Distance, we will choose the width we want. In this case, it will be set to 5. Depending on the letter style you have, the Offset feature might create these small islands inside. But don't worry, this can be easily fixed. If you don't want these on your design, simply select the offset line, then ungroup, and then select and delete them one by one. Up here we can adjust the size of our keychain. Let's choose 8 cm. To finish the keychain, we can add a small hole at one of the corners to pass the ring through. To do this, we draw a small circle and choose where to place it. Next we will adjust the cutting and engraving parameters of our drawing. In this case, we will want the name to be engraved and the edge, including the ring hole, to be cut. To do this, we select the name and here at the right we choose Fill and adjust the parameters for our type of wood. Then we select the edge and the circle and add a new layer. In this case, since we want to cut, we have to choose the line option and define the parameters for cutting. Please note that since we will be using a laser with only 5 watts of output power, we will have to make a few passes to get a clean cut. For this type of wood and with this laser, we will define 6 passes for cutting. Don't forget to set the orders of the layers so that the laser starts with the engraving and only then does the cutting. Here at the right, we first have the fill layer for the engraving and then the line layer defined with several passes for cutting. To get a preview of the project, just click here. Ok, we have all the settings typed in, now we can save the project. All we need to do now is prepare our laser engraver. As we mentioned, we will use our Scopefun S9. First, connect the power to the engraver. Since this model does not have a memory card slot, we have to connect the engraver to the computer using the USB cable. 
Before turning on the machine, we have to adjust the height of the laser, and to do this, we need to use the adjustment cylinder. If you are using a different laser, check your adjustment procedure. In this case, we take the wood that we are going to use, or a similar one with the same thickness, and place it under the laser head. Then we loosen the screws that secure the laser head and move it down until the head touches the cylinder. With the laser at the correct height, we can tighten back the screws and remove the cylinder. Since we will need to make a few cuts, it's always a good practice to have a honeycomb under the material that will be cut. Remember to always adjust the height of the laser. If you add any platform or use a board with different thickness from the one you used before when calibrating. If this is the first time you are using your engraver, you must first configure Lightburn for your machine. To do this, you can go to Devices and try the Find Automatically option first. If it does not detect your engraver automatically, then use the Create Manually option instead. Then we choose the GRBL option, then Serial USB. Finally, we choose the name we want to give our laser and define its working area. In our case, the S9 has a working area of 410 by 420 mm. We choose front left as the origin point, and since this laser model does not have end stops, we disable the auto home. Before starting, we can click on the preview and see how long our work will take until it's completed. We already have our laser configured, and to start working, we just have to click play here at the right. Also, when working with laser engravers, always wear protective goggles. OK, and here you can check our laser in progress. The video shows the true speed of the engraver. Since our laser only has an output power of 5 watts, and to achieve a well-defined cut, we prefer to set 6 passes for the cut. However, if you use an air assist, and by adjusting your settings, you will be able to reduce the number of passes and maintain the quality. And here is the final piece. As you can see, the engraving is well defined, and the cut is well done and without burn marks. Even by only using simple options here on Lightburn, we can get different results and all of them very cute. Easy, isn't it? So, feel free to leave your comments below in the video description. And that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!